We're now live. We've been live for 31 seconds. I guess we should start. I see that as well. So one of the big questions that a lot of would-be beginner rookie authors ask me is this one. What should I write about? So I'm Scott Patton. He's Dan Morris. What should we talk about? This is a good topic. And I must say that, that sometimes I'm bewildered that people, that people actually ask this question. And I'm bewildered because the, the, cause to me it seems like you would have the idea of what you're going to write about before you want to write a book. To me, it seems backwards that you would want to write a book, but you don't know what you would write about. So for me, it's always just been odd, you know, kind of like, I really just want to clean something. Should I clean a house or an apartment? You know, like, just isn't, wouldn't that be strange? People ask that. That's, that's a great (laughs) analogy. And I feel the same way. Like, it's like, but having said that, I've coached a lot of people who want to have an online business and almost, well, I'd say 80%, now this is 20 years ago, 80% is, well, what should my business be? Whereas it, yeah. for me, it would be like, what do you know? What do you like? And let's build a business around that. Yeah. But for some so reason. people, You know how there's always somebody in the office who's good at Excel? Like there's this person, you know, if you, if you need something done, like he's down the hall, you know, it could be a woman, but whoever it is, they have all the knowledge for Excel. They know how to add columns. They know how to combine columns. They know how to put like equations in there. Well, the the fact is that the, that whatever that is, that's everybody has that. You might be the right. person people go to when they have a plant question. Like you just might be like the house plant person in your neighborhood. Everyone knows. Go ask Thelma. She, she will know what's wrong with your spider plant. Like, that's right. just the right. Oh, well, like even thinking your family, you know, are you the person everyone goes to for like electronics questions? Like, oh yeah, go ask Dan. He knows right. all the electronics. Stuff. Something's wrong with my car. Oh yeah. yeah. Talk to Scott. He'll take one look and tell you what it is. So my thought is, if that is already your reputation, then the only reason that's your reputation is because you actually know stuff about that topic. Like, and you didn't learn it with a gun against your head. You probably learned it because it was interesting to you. So right. I was thinking, shouldn't that be the thing that you do, the thing that people know you're good at? You just read? I mean, even turn around and look at your bookshelf. What, what's on it? What is the common themes that you like to read about? Is it mystery? Is it how to ride bikes? Is it, you know, hiking throughout the Southwest, the United States? Like, what are, what are those things? Like, something in that world, your reputation, the books that you own, just the things that you like to talk about, this is the thing you should probably be in business for. This is the thing you should write. So what you're saying is if I am an expert baker, I make the best pies, cakes, donuts, bread in in my neighborhood. Everybody loves my stuff. I shouldn't write a book on how to play chess. So that's a good Let's Let me come back to that with the with – the, a related story. So a couple of years ago, or maybe five, a lady came to me and said she wanted to create a kindergarten blog mm-hmm. because she had kindergarten. And I said, well, you know, when your kids are in sixth grade, you're probably not going to care about the kindergarten. And she said, no, 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 I will like it. You know, and lo and behold, five years later, she has no interest in it. She wants to know, like, should I change it to, like, small children or elementary school? <laughs> So, right. so you, you really have to think about, you know, the idea if you're, if you're a baker, should you start a chest? Like, is that just something you're interested in now? Or is that my point was they're totally unrelated, right? Yeah. Or like, obviously, baking is something that you've done for a while. Why not? Right. Why not pen Go. your favorite recipes and start something? Yeah. Start with where, with what you know. Yeah, well, definitely. But even more importantly, the fact that you know it means you probably already like to talk about it. Like if you go right. to a party, where does the conversation usually end? Like cooking, recipes, like what, yeah. what happens? 
What do you gravitate? Yeah, to? I go I go to a party and everybody asks me about the sourdough bread, but all I want to talk about is how I checkmated you in our last game, which of course I didn't play because I'm not interested in chess at all, right? So it's yeah, we talk when that's a great thing. Like when you go to a party, what are you talking about? And those are areas of interest. Because my point being is, is that if you have no interest before writing a book, uh, or before thinking about a topic, writing a book in a topic, I, I can't think of a worse use of your time and a more frustrating experience than deciding to write a book on something you have absolutely no interest in, right? Mm. So. You know, like so, my in my mind, like the baker is somebody they 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 touch, they they put a little bit of salt here. They's they're feeling, they're creating, they're putting love oh. into the product, right? And they're hands on. Whereas the chess player is like very focused, very. Th I mean, the baker he's got to be thinking, you know, in two minutes I got to take the bread out of here, but then I got to put icing on here, and he's got a million things going on. But the chess player is thinking of a one thing. That's the move five moves from now if he's going to be able to do that. And so the personalities, I assume, are just so divergent that, you know, to take one type of mindset and mentality and then have to change it to fit into the, you know, the round peg in the square hole of the other topic is, uh, you know, it would just it would it would just be hell, I think, for that person. So we want the writing to be an experience of growth, of joy, of love, of expression. And you cannot express about things that you don't care about, right? So, you know, we, we homeschool some of the kids. Um, and I, my class, besides I teach, besides teaching Spanish, um, which I don't know, but, you know, the old axiom in the kingdom of the blind, the one-eyed man's king, I've always figured out if I'm, you know, one step ahead of the kids to teach Spanish, well, they'll learn Spanish. Oh. Um, but one of the things I wanted to do this year was have them write a report. But no kid wants to write a report. Like it's just not, it's not a thing. So I thought I would make it fun. I thought, you know what I'll do? I'll just have them write about something they like. About me. They like. So I started talking to, the, to Sam, and he likes, he likes coffee. He likes to drink coffee. He likes to make his lattes and stuff. Uh, and now we're... Um, I don't know, six weeks into, we're not been writing this every day, but six weeks into this process, and it's a little bit laborious for him. Uh, like, just researching the different things, he doesn't actually care that much. I think he just likes to make a drink. Um, but what happens is, whenever there's a break, whenever he's got free time, he goes plays Minecraft. Uh, and then he's always in interested when he comes up with a Minecraft fact. Like, did you know that the owners were this old when they made it. And, and I've been thinking, like, why why didn't I think of Minecraft at the beginning? Because he already likes to learn about it and research it. Like I, I thought I was picking something he liked, but in reality, I think that was just a little bit surface. And if I would have gone a little bit deeper, I would have thought about what does he do in his spare time? What does he actually enjoy? What kind of YouTube videos does he watch? We might have been able to come up with something where week six, it's not laborious. It's actually fun. Which goes back to the question, what should I write about? You got to think about this. If this is going to be your career or a series of books, it's really got to be something that's going to hold your interest for a long period of time. Like it just has to be something inside your soul. That you just love this kind of thing. Otherwise, there will yep. be a time when it's just uh, when it's just a job. And Or worse, yeah. right? I mean – it's just something that you feel like you have to do that you have no joy in doing. Well, I guess yeah. that could be a job too, right? I mean, yeah, it's just like, just imagine, <laughs> I don't want to pick on any particular uh, group of employees, but I, you know, imagine being a dishwasher <laughs> for your whole life, right? Like, it would yeah. just be yeah, for me. It would just be terrible, right? I don't mind cleaning up my dishes every day, but I don't want to clean up, you know, five hundred people's worth of dishes every day. And but it, there's where's somebody the, out there, yeah, who that's their why. Like they love that. There's somebody out there who loves that. Like that's right. And that could be you. Know? And I think that makes that makes a really you make a really good point there, Dan. In that the there's 
everybody has different, in, and this is what makes life so fun. Everybody has different interests, different things that they really get off on doing and enjoy doing. And that's what we really want you to express, you know, because you can, yeah. we're, we're in kind of this interesting time compared to like 40 years ago. 40 years ago, if you wrote a book, it would go into Coles in Canada. And I don't know if they had them in the States or chapters. And that was pretty much it, right? Now you have Amazon. And if your book was one, it was a book that one person in each city in North America would be interested in, there would be no point, right? The, the, I mean, no. the bookstore would never buy your book because they want to move through books, right? But because we have things like Amazon and Indigo and other places where you know, people can find find books and buy them, you now have 7 billion people who would, you know, from which to draw upon as opposed to one person in a city where they actually had to go to a physical place and get the book. So that means that if you have the most obscure topic in the world, you could have hundreds of thousands of people fascinated by your topic. Right? Definitely. So well, it's, let's talk you know, but, let's talk about that. Um, let's think three years down the line from your book that you just wrote, it becomes popular. You've got a social media following and then there's going to be an event. You're going to put down a conference or something. All based originally on this idea, this book that you wrote, we had a, had a blogger in our, uh, Quebec blogging concentrated event. And she was in tears halfway through the event because she realized that her, her blog was not her. It was, she was so frustrated with it. And what happened was oh. she, actually, she actually chased the likes. She chased the dollars. So she started writing about organic like organic foods, healthy foods, all of these great, super healthy things. And then she started to get a following of people who like these super healthy things. And if she posted anything else, you know, she would get berated or, you know, like that. Who would eat that kind of trash? Um, so now she's like 10 years down the line. She's got 900,000 fans and they're all based on this wow. fake thing because – when she goes home, she buys boxed mac and cheese and she makes cakes from, from a box. Um, you know, she likes to add salsa to her boxed mac and cheese. And she oh, that's a good think, idea. Yeah, yeah. She didn't think at the time that there would be enough people. And she wasn't willing to wade through all of the people who say that's not healthy and, and chide her. But she knew that she would be a lot happier if she could actually photograph the food that she actually makes instead of making another another meal that she would never eat and then photograph that and go through all this work if she if it just aligned with her life she would be so much happier but she ended up somebody liked healthy and they liked it and she's like oh i'll, I'll make another healthy recipe and then somebody liked that and you know down the line she ends up in this business that's not even really her and she's in tears and she doesn't know how to start over because everything that you do ends up snowballing. So think about that. Like whatever this book that you're thinking about writing, think about three years from now, you're going to have a conference and all of your friends are going to come. Who should be in that room? What do they like to talk about? Like who do you want to hobnob with? Who do you want to have dinner with? Like what, what should the conversation be? And if, whatever that is, like that's probably what the book should be about because it would attract those people and then those people would show up at the event and your life would be so much better if you were surrounded by all of the people who love to talk about the thing that you love to talk about. That's a super great point, Dan. Uh, authenticity, right? It's so much easier if you can just be who you are instead of all of a sudden finding out that everybody thinks you're something different than what you are and now I've got to keep up this facade, which is huge energy drain on people. Oh, so much. And so then, you, know, you I want to... I think I just saw in the news some some famous vegan YouTuber. Was that Arby's or something? <laughs> she, got, she got like her picture taken at Arby's. 
because she's not really a super famous vegan person. That's just her personality on YouTube. And then, but to live that way, to make sure you never get caught. Oh, just so much. Right. That's not going to happen. You're going to get caught. <laughs> too, many, so, too many people with cameras, with phones, with yeah. cameras, right? So anyway, so, to, to su yeah, to summarize, write about what you love. There's always enough people for you to have a good audience and be authentic and look. And I, one of the things you talked about, Dan, that I find really fascinating has to do with self-awareness, right? A lot of people don't know what they like doing, <laughs> right? They just yeah. sort of do it. So one thing you can do is ask your friends, like, you know, what do you think I should write about? Because they might, you know, they see you all the time. They see when you're happy. They see when you're sad. They see when you're angry. They see when you're full of joy and love. And they can say, yeah, like gardening, that's the, that's the thing that you just love to do. Like talk about all your plants and how you do that. Or, no. you know, or you know, travel um, or whatever it happens to be. There's lots of room. A few years ago, I was looking at my Pinterest account. And I had created a board for art. I, I, I don't know why I'm not in the art. Um, well, I guess I sort of am. Look at that. I guess I sort of am. Uh, but what my wife noticed as she scrolled through all of the different art that I had pinned, all the pictures, paintings, different kinds of art, she realized that there was an actual color pattern. I had like six colors, every single one of them. Had, had these six colors. And when you scroll through it, it's an instant. You just, it just pops right out of you. Like, wow, these are all about the same color. Um, and I had no idea that I actually had a preference or I had a palette that I liked. So maybe, maybe you look at your unconscious things. Like maybe go through your, your internet history and just start scroll through, look at things that you've looked up. Maybe something's going to pop out of you that you just hadn't really even thought about. Um, Go, go through your bookshelves. Like, what kind of books do you have? Go through your Netflix queue. What do you watch? Are your YouTubes, uh, your YouTube videos? Like, there's a lot of unconscious things that we're doing that are a really good indication of what we like that maybe we just hadn't really thought about before. Looking at that Pinterest board for me was like, holy mackerel. I didn't even that know I liked these colors all together, let alone separately, but every single picture had these five colors in it. So, right. it's interesting. That is, that's fascinating. And, you know, as I was listening to you, I realized too, like we've been talking about writing as in writing a book. And that really is kind of our focus of this, this series. Mm -hmm. But blogging is writing and article writing is writing. And as you were talking about know, things that you love, like I follow my hockey team, right? And it doesn't matter where in the world I am. If I can watch them, I watch them. If not, I read blogs on my hockey team. And what I've really? noticed over, yeah, so because I want to know what's going on, but you know, there's the official version that, you know, gets whitewashed by the team. And I want to have someone that's, you know, following the team and not uh, just. Is that the Canucks? Out. That's the Canucks in Vancouver, yes. And, uh, but what I've noticed a very interesting thing. And that is that some of the analysts now on the, uh, you know, on the, on the broadcast on TV and, some of the writers in um, in the newspaper, they a lot of them started out on one or two of these blogs that were just focused on the Canucks hockey team, right? So they would do these analysis for the blogs, and they and then <clears throat> it got popular and popular and popular. And of course, the team, their press release, their PR people, public relations, and everyone else started uh, you know paying attention, and then two people that did one blog ended up taking their, because they were talking about statistical stuff in evaluating players. They have actually been at a, not the Canucks table, but two different teams tables over the last 10 years at the draft. So when it comes up to our turn to pick a player in the draft, Hey George, what do you think of this guy, this guy, and this guy? And George, here's, here's the uh, stats boss. Okay, we're going to pick him. <laughs> and 
this came from these people that were blogging on this local blog in Vancouver, right? And then other ones, like I was watching a Saturday Night Hockey, and the guy's like, that guy was a major blogger on this site. And they hired him away, and now he's on TV doing commentary on TV between periods, right? So a lot of doors open up from, uh, from writing, not just the, uh, you know, sell the book in the store thing, but also... Yeah other opportunities because of the fact that you're becoming an expert in your field because you're you're well known people want to you know leverage that whether it's on radio tv all those sort of things and uh, so so the point being is if you're going to be on tv and you like to bake and they're going to be asking you questions about chess that you hate <laughs> is that yeah. the type of life you want right no so particularly when you can be on talking about what you love. Yeah, I, I think, uh, did you ever see that Jim Carrey speech about his dad? I th a long time ago. His dad was a comedian. Uh, but oh. he, didn't think, he didn't think that being a comedian was going to be a safe route economically once he had kids. So he became an accountant. Oh. Um, and, and then he got fired from being an accountant. And Jim Carrey was saying, you know, it's possible that even when you take the safe route, you're not going to make it. Right. So you might as well go for the one that you really like. Uh, and I've always thought that was really interesting, just that whole concept. Like, why? Like, there's no guarantee no matter which road you take. So you might as well take the one you really like because there's. Yeah no better option you could fail at anything so you might as well right fail at the thing yeah. you love that you're afraid of yeah so, so yeah do you um, want to be a failed comedian that didn't make it in hollywood or do you want to be an accountant who got fired <laughs> yeah. i think there's a better story going to going to uh going to yeah. hollywood and not making it than there is being in uh tucson that, and being fired as an accountant that whole idea of uh, of opening doors, I think, is probably the most critical thing you should take from this talk. Uh, because my my best friend Dave, he went to law school in Nebraska, and he got an internship uh, with a firm that dealt with the public school system. And then out of college, he parlayed that school system experience into a job at a law firm that dealt with schools. And then he parlayed that experience into, uh, he's, head of the, he's the head of the law department for the state of Colorado schools. Like wow. everything, everything builds upon itself. Those doors open. So when, when high school kids are telling me like, what kind of summer job should I get? I ask, well, what is it that you want to do? And they say, well, I'd like to get into the media. And well, maybe you should try to get an internship at a TV station, not mow lawns. Right. Because the lawn, the lawn guy is going to get you free lawn equipment. The TV station, they might have old equipment you could use. They, they might take to a conference that's about TV and media stuff. They, you might meet someone you're going to need to know down the line. But you might as well write a book about even the smallest little thing in the world that you love. Because it. It's going to open some door and you're hoping it's the right door. It's not, it's not long care of dishwashing, but it's to the thing that you love. That's right. There's no guarantee. I think that's a good point too. But if you're not, if there's no guarantee, then go for what you love because that's going to bring you a lot more joy and happiness. So I think that's a great spot for us to uh, finish this segment segment. Thank you very much, Dan. I appreciate you and the wisdom that you bring. And uh, we'll move on to the next one.